Hello there, welcome to this Carbon Academy tutorial on A-level biology. In this video we will be looking at the phosphorus and the nitrogen cycle. So let's get started. These are the aims of this tutorial. We will look at the steps that occurs in the phosphorus cycle and understand the importance of phosphate ions. Next, we'll cover the processes occurring in the nitrogen cycle and finally finish by discussing the importance of nitrate ions. Okay, let's start with the phosphorus cycle. The process starts when phosphate ions in the rocks are released into the lake or soil by weathering. These are then absorbed by plant roots. Note that mycorrhizae fungi, which are present in certain soil plants, further assimilate phosphorus. Assimilate simply means increase the absorption. I mentioned this in my previous video on decomposition and eutrophication. The phosphate absorbed by plants move up the food chain via primary, secondary and tertiary consumers. Some of the phosphate gets released via faeces. A common mark scheme point in exam is guano, which are faeces of seabirds. This has a lot of phosphate in them. The last part to the phosphorus cycle involves the release of phosphate into the soil via decomposition. So far, we discussed the natural process of the phosphorus cycle but there is another way, and that is human intervention. Good old humans don't leave anything, always wanting to interfere with the nature. The use of artificial fertilizers in farming can lead to leaching and eutrophication. Now it's important to understand why we need phosphate. There's no point in learning the cycle if it's not useful. Phosphates are needed for the formation of molecules such as phospholipids, ATP, DNA and RNA. Furthermore, phosphate ions are needed for phosphorylation which makes compounds more reactive. Remember, phosphorylation is the addition of phosphate. Now let's move to the nitrogen cycle. This is going to be information laden, so prepare yourself. Firstly, there is nitrogen fixation, where nitrogen gas is converted to ammonia, which can be due to lightening or nitrogen fixing bacteria. A point to note is that leguminous plants like peas and beans contain this nitrogen fixing bacteria in their roots. I know this image shows ammonium, and this is because ammonia can't be absorbed. The ammonia made is dissolved in water in the soil to form ammonium ions, which are absorbed by the roots. However, most ammonium gets converted to nitrates by nitrification, as they are more easily absorbed when compared to ammonium. Next we have ammonification, which simply means the production of ammonia. It occurs when nitrogen in dead organic matter or animal waste gets converted to ammonia. Remember, ammonia isn't absorbable, so it immediately dissolves in water to form ammonium, which gets absorbed. This process only occurs in oxygenated conditions, as decomposition is an aerobic process. Check out my previous video where I covered this in detail. The link is in the description below. After ammonification, we have nitrification, which I briefly touched on earlier. And this is where ammonium is converted to nitrate with nitrites being an intermediate substrate. The nitrates made get absorbed much more quicker than ammonium. Finally, we come to denitrification, which is where nitrates get converted to nitrogen gas by denitrifying bacteria. And this occurs mainly in waterlogged soil, which has low oxygen. Now let's understand the importance of nitrate ions. These are needed for nucleic acid synthesis, which in turn are needed for the production of DNA and RNA. Most importantly, nitrates are needed for protein synthesis, and these points should be familiar to you. Here's a cheat sheet of what we went through regarding the nitrogen cycle. In terms of the bacteria, for AQA you don't need to remember the names, but you do need to know the type of bacteria such as nitrogen fixing bacteria, nitrifying bacteria and etc. And remember, plants can only absorb nitrate and ammonium ions. And note that most ammonium and ammonia gets converted to nitrates by nitrifying bacteria. Also note that NH3 stands for ammonia, NO2 stands for nitrites, and NO3 stands for nitrates. So here's a summary of what we covered today. There was a lot of information that we covered, so do take your time in understanding this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.